you know, you can you can have a favorite pastor or preacher and maybe uh, you attend a place where uh, you know most traditionally people here in America they go meet together on Sundays they call it going to church although you know we know that the church is actually the people and you're entering into a building together or a house or wherever you're congregating wherever you want so you're churching together and usually there's somebody up there that's a, a preacher and most preachers um, are also the pastor of the church the senior pastor of the church not always but sometimes and you might really really like that guy you might really really think you know him but I'll tell you what you don't know him like his wife knows him. You don't know him like his wife knows him because they have something that is much more intimate together. Intimate. Intimacy doesn't always have to be what our carnal minds think intimacy is, right? It's very spiritual, although if you relate intimacy in a, um, a uh, well, let's say a carnal kind of way, a fleshly kind of way. Oh man, should I even say this? I, you really gotta watch how you say things um, on YouTube because uh, they really don't want you to say things that children can't listen to. So I've got to be careful. So I'm going to speak in a language. I hope those of you have that have ears that are ripe to hear. <laughs> Do you hear me? Ears that are ripe to hear. Ripe means matured, right? So I'm going to speak in a way that hopefully you understand. When a man and a woman especially Old Testament times, you know, because we're going to talk about marriage. Well, what actually sealed that marriage was when they would have intimate relation. A man... will give himself to a woman, but the woman, but he doesn't force, not proper, we're talking in the proper way, he doesn't force himself, she needs to welcome him in, right? Open up to let him in. And once he does, he will plant a seed into her and in her be, there's a life that starts that begins from that seed that seed is the life but that thing they call ovary that's what houses the life do you understand? The life enters in through that seed and that ovary houses the wife, the, the life. And that life is now in her womb. And as she walks with this life in her womb, she gets to know more and more of her husband, doesn't she? They really, really start to know, understand each other, the closeness, right? It's all through something that's very intimate. Well, 
the day that you opened up to Christ, you received him and you let him enter in, right? He didn't force himself to be in you. You let him in. And when you did, that seed, 1 John 3, 9 talks about that seed that goes into you. That seed that is sinless. That seed that is perfect. That seed that does not produce. John uses a Greek word, poyo. Your Bible might say, you know, of anyone that's born of Christ, that seed of Christ that's in you, um, do, doth not commit sin, committeth, whatever. Well, committeth, committeth sin or even practice, as some script uh, translations say. It's actually, um, that would actually be the Greek word praso. Praso. But John uses a word called poyo. Like when, when Paul says he practices the very evil he wish he wouldn't do, but that practice, he says, that's in my flesh. That's the sin in my flesh. It's not really me, right? That's who I used to be, but it's not me. He says, because I'm identified now and the inner man, and the inner man is that spirit that dwells in you that is not apart from you, that actually is you. That life, now, oh, okay, let me, let me slow down. Okay, so poyo. So that life inside of you, that seed called Christ in you, that is one spirit with you. You're one spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. If you're joined to the Lord, you're one spirit. So that one spirit in you is the one who's incapable of poyo, producing, manufacturing, creating or making sin, right? Because your spirit is incapable of it. I hope that'll help you to understand 1 John 3, 9. Very, very simple. Otherwise, John's a little wishy-washy because he also talks about, hey, if, if, if you don't admit that you're sin, you're a liar, that you commit sin, you're a liar. Anybody who says they don't have sin, they're liars. Well, yeah. So Paul and John, they really, they, they really help, you know, to understand each other, understand what Christ is really saying, honestly. Paul helps you to know who the one is that commits the sin. He says that it's, it's, it's the sin that dwells in your flesh. It's not you. And John says it's the seed of Christ in you, <laughs> that seed. Now, interestingly enough, like let's say Mary had Christ in her, right? That life. Do you know the name Mary? Mary, much like Mary, our flesh and Mary are similar. Our flesh and Mary. Um, Mary's name, and this could really offend you guys, especially if your name is Mary or if you came from a religion that really worshipped Mary and put Mary as a goddess or, or, or whatever, you know? Um, cause there are people that really, really worship her. They even pray to her and all that. Mary, her name means bitterness and rebellion, bitterness and rebellion. Like you remember the bitter waters that, that, uh, Moses threw wood into that wood representing, of course, I hope you know, it represents the cross. Through the cross, he makes our water sweet, Christ does. Our internal waters. We were born in darkness or bitter waters, but inside of our spirit, now our spirit's changed into sweet waters, right? Well, Mary and the name of those bitter waters have the same root meaning. You know, the waters of Mara, bitterness. Rebellion also, because that's in our flesh, that's where we uh, are rebels. The rebellion's in the flesh, not in your spirit. Do you understand? The only thing is, um, Christ in her wasn't her identity. It was identity, the identity of the Son. Well, much like that outer person, let's call your outer person Mary or bitterness and rebellion, your real identity now 
is Christ in you. You're a newborn, right? You are newborn, but you're a newborn spirit. You're, 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 you, you, you gave birth to, to Christ in you. You're, you're, that is your life. Do you understand? So you're not identified in the flesh anymore, right? Just like Mary wasn't Jesus Christ, although she had Christ in her. Well, you and I aren't that old person, the bitterness and rebellion. You are identified with your spirit. Do you understand? Now, let's go back to intimacy. Like Mary, by the way. <laughs> this is great. You would agree that Mary didn't speak Greek, right? She was a Hebrew person. Hebrew person. When Gabriel came to Mary and he tells her that she's going to give her birth to, uh, well, do you know, Emmanuel, by the way, is God with us. God with us. And she sure, certainly did give birth to God with us, right? And then his name was to be called Yeshua, which is salvation in Hebrew. Savior, salvation, comes from the uh, Hebrew word Yasha. Ya and Sha. Ya is Yahweh. Sha is save, to save, right? So Yahweh saves, Yasha. Um, that's the, the meaning of, uh, of Yasha. It means to save or deliver. All comes from Yahweh. And don't separate Yahweh from Jesus because Yahweh is the name that is like your last name, your family name. My family name is Lere, Lere in German. I just say Lere here in uh, America, but if you lived in Germany, the part my dad, my, my dad grew up in the black forest of Germany. So his dialect or his accent, they would pronounce my last name Lere, where in other parts of Germany, you know, just like the United States, we have a lot of accents depending on where you're from. New York, they have an accent. Texas has an accent. Californians, they say we have an accent. So, you know, we talk a little bit different. So other parts of Germany, they might say Lera, Lera, right? Michael Lera, that would be my name, but my dad pronounces it Lere. So, uh, yeah, I used to have a, 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 a a German teacher in high school. When I was in high school, I took German because I wanted to understand what my parents were saying behind me and my sister's backs. And he used to argue with me about how to pronounce my last name. He'd tell me, you're not pronouncing your last name right. It's Lera. And I said, no, it's Lere. And he says, you're wrong. Just what? And I'm, then I, later on, I started thinking, you know what? He's just thinking one way because whatever part of Germany he's from, that's how they say things. That's, that's, his accent. You know, Germans have different accents just like Americans do. So my dad pronounced it Lere. Anyway, back to why I was talking about Yahweh. My family name is Lere. Michael is how I, I am identified, right? As, as it, 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 in that family name. I, I'm Michael. You know, my, my name's not Gunter like my father, but we have the same last name. The family name of Jesus is Yahweh, right? Do you understand that? It's like a last name. The Father has it, the Son has it, the Holy Spirit has it. And I see lots of feminine qualities in Holy Spirit, right? God created man and woman in his image. Male and female created him, they, right? He created them, male and female. Eve wasn't called helper for nothing. And Jesus didn't call Holy Spirit helper for nothing. They're things for us to just, ooh, digest, you know? God has the, those, those qualities of, yes, father. He's got qualities of brother, friend, Jesus, right? He's got qualities of what a mother would give, a true loving mother, right? I find that to be in the Ruach, the Spirit. So, and the more intimately you know God, you'll understand these things. Intimacy. Let's go back to this now. Intimacy. So,
when the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, told her all these amazing things that blew her away, going to be pregnant, but you know, you're going to give birth to a son, but how can this be? She says, for I have not had Gnosko with a man. That would be in Greek, the New Testament. But what Mary would have said is, I have not had Yada. That would be the Hebrew. I have not had Yada with a man. Yada is the Hebrew word where it says, when Adam and Eve were intimate, it says Adam knew his wife. Well, how do he know her? Did he read a book about her? Did God tell her about tell him about her, or did he become very intimate with Eve? Did they get to know each other intimately? And when he entered into Eve, and Eve received him into her, right? And then he plants his seed. It's called yada, yada. He entered in. She received him in, right? Yada. In Greek, it would be gnosko. Mary said, I have not had gnosko with a man. Intimacy, right? It's more than what you think in a carnal way. Don't think if you've went and had sex with all these people, you've had what true intimacy is. No, that's just carnal stuff. True intimacy is really, really getting to know somebody in every way, spirit, soul, body, you understand? So intimacy with God, it's even what Jesus prayed to the Father in John chapter 17, a scripture I'm, I was uh, probably the most used scripture, one of the most used scriptures that Jehovah's Witnesses use. I was once Jehovah's Witness as well, so I can speak for them, but unfortunately, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, I did not understand what this scripture says because my leaders misled me because they were under the authority of a much different spirit, not an intimate spirit with Christ, but they had a different authority working in their religious minds because we thought that this scripture had a different meaning. John 17, three, Jesus says, and this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent, whom you have sent, to know you. This is eternal, this is life eternal. Life is zoe, eternal is ionos, right? Ionos doesn't only mean eternal, it also means the quality of life you are living right here, right now, did you know that? has a lot of different meanings. It's good to know this word, by the way. Oh, let me just tell you. And understanding it. You'd understand other things in a much different way as well. But he says this is the Zoe. Ionos. The eternal. The, the life. And Zoe has so much to it as well. True life. True life. And with light in it. The God life. That they may know you the only true God, right? And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. See, that true God nature belongs to Jesus. There's no separating Jesus Christ or the true God because that's his nature. That's where he came from. He was an angel, right? His nature was divine, right? Which is Theos, which is God. To know you. Now, when I was Jehovah's Witness, our Bibles, I, I think now they, 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 they actually say knowing, knowing you because they've probably been corrected a gazillion times by many other outside sources. And they finally said, oh boy, we might as well just say knowing you because they used to say taking in knowledge, taking in knowledge of you. Do you know what taking in knowledge is? It's like I said in the beginning of this, you go to your church gathering, you know, all you people gathering together, you've got the pastor up there, you're listening to his messages, you love the guy, you really do. I love a lot of great preachers and pastors. I, oh man, there's so many people that have inspired me and I just love them. But I'll tell you what, I don't have intimate knowing of them. 
I don't have intimacy with them. I don't know them the way that their wife knows them. Do you understand? No. I have head knowledge of them. I might even be friend with them. And friends can have a closeness. David and Jonathan, they had an intimacy, not sexual. They had an intimacy in a different way. This love that they had between each other, a super awesome friendship, a bond, powerful, right? Brotherly. But if Jonathan would have had a wife, David wouldn't have known Jonathan the way his wife does. You might like that pastor or pe preacher. You might like me even. And you might even be a personal friend of mine. But you don't know me as much as if I had a wife. As much as she would know me, right? <laughs> Fortunately, there's been, <laughs> there's been women in my life that would tell you this guy's a monster, right? Well, thankfully, I've got Christ in me. On the outside, monster. I'm glad that I'm not identified in that anymore. I'm identified in spirit, right? I don't like when that monster comes out. I don't like when that monster manifests. That's why I have to consider myself dead to that monster. Consider yourself dead, right? That's what the scriptures say. So I'm just going to translate it into Michael LeRae's version. Consider the monster dead, right? But you're alive in Christ. You've got beauty living inside of you. And you're beautiful, right? That's how God sees you. So this eternal life is intimacy. It is Gnosko, or in Hebrew, it is Yada. Do you understand? And the more you draw closer and closer and closer and closer, the more you let him into you, the more you receive who he is, get religion out of you, quit listening to what other people tell you, right? Well, this is who got it. No, he wants to reveal himself personally to you and speak personally to you like he does with me and so many of you as well. He wants to reveal himself to you and he might reveal himself to you in a much different way that he reveals himself to somebody else because he knows you intimately. So get to know him intimately as well, right? Because it's eternal life. It is the true quality of life that you have right here, right now, right? That Ionos life, the quality that you live in. And let me tell you, there's nothing more beautiful than understanding who our Heavenly Father is, who Jesus is, and who that Holy Spirit is that's in you and joined to your spirit as one. All right, you guys, I hope you have a great day. God bless you all. You're joined together in Christ, one spirit, you look like the number 11, right? The two being joined together to make one. That's you. All right, I love you. See you all in the next video.